So we're actually at the site of St Mary Magdalene Church in Great Burstead. We're on the west tower and um, the north tower. This north tower is made of ragstone and random rubble. Dates from the 14th century. It's um, protected as a Grade 1 listed building or structure. If you look, you can see the putlocks. These square holes would have had a post which would protrude out. Another one here. And then the builders would put a layer board across it and work the way up. And you can see the parallel with that one and parallel across there. And this is how it's constructed. At the top, it's got a castellated parapet surmounted by a shingled spire. If you can't quite see if I walk backwards a bit. It's really nice. So the 14th century, um, there's a lot of things that happen in the 14th century. We had the Great Famine, it was started due to bad weather in 1315 for two years and 80% of the cattle died right here. Um, it was followed by the Black Death, bubonic plague, 1346, that lasted for eight years, that spread from Europe, or from Asia actually to Europe and then across England. Half the population died. This caused massive civil unrest and what we what we got from that was the Peasants Revolt 1381. 1381 Peasants Revolt was basically where the nobility took power over the peasants and increase the taxes on a starving population and it actually started, believe it or not, in Brentwood on the 30th of May 1381 in Brentwood unpaid taxes were being collected by the royal official John Bampton ended in violence the violence quickly spread to parts of Across Essex, right into London, Kent, um, it spread up as far as um, Cambridgeshire and I think it went beyond that. So it was a really big affair and the population at the time got stuck in. And the Essex men, they marched to London with their leader Watt Tyler, um, thousands of them, all armed and for a while they sacked London, they actually took the Tower of London, the Norman Fort, they took that, burned a lot of stuff. Uh, they made a mistake. What Tyler got into an argument with the King's people and he got stabbed. And now they've lost the leader, there was panic. Uh, they basically took his head off put it on a spike, put it on, um, where was it, it was killed, Smithfield, near the market, which is still there, and his head was put at Tower, of, Tower Bridge. The Essex men fled back here. They went to, most of them actually came from this area. They, um, they fled to a place called Norsey Woods. Norsey Woods, you can still visit, still as it was Wallace. Um, they were familiar with Norsey Woods, they put barricades up um, using carts. The King's men pursued. 
they took advantage of it. They, they basically caught them by surprise. They weren't, these uh, Essex guys weren't trained in warfare, they were farmers, labourers, etc. They were taken by surprise. And uh, 500 were killed by the King's men who was on horseback. Um, 800 of their horses were taken and they were buried here. This area, possibly down there, which goes down to it's a massive cemetery, keeps going way down there. So if we go back to the church, we move on to the 15th century. In the 15th century they added the South Isle. Which is starts where these buttresses are around the corner from the buttress. And if you look at here, you've got what they call checkerboard flint. And this was originally stone was brought in from France. I guess that would be in time with the Hundred Years' War when there was a lot of ships coming from there. So, Hundred Years' War. So, we had a hundred years war at the time between French and English. Agincourt, they used the bows, from possibly from this tree. And then we also had War of the Roses, which is between the two families, the Plantagenet and the Tudors. And the Tudors, they, uh, they won. 1486 they came to rule. This is a 16th century porch that was added. And it's heavy oak timbers. All shoon by hand with oak pegs. Really nice and ornate. And you can see the way it goes on to the 15th century original, I don't know what you call this. Stop the rain getting in, whatever it is. It's right up against it. It's literally bolted up against it. So, this is 15th century as well. So the Tudors are now in power. And then we go from that century to the 16th. Now this is the 16th century part of the church. It's called the South Chapel. And if you look at the difference in the craftsmanship, of the flint, the checkerboard flint, it's just non-existent. They just whacked it in there. I mean, at least, at least they've made an effort to blend it in, but it's just not up to the standard. Some sort of doorway there that's been bricked up. Second World War, a bomb actually landed here from the Germans. The Luftwaffe dropped a bomb of some sort and it blew this side caused a lot of damage. I think a lot of this is probably dating from that. This window inside depicts the Mayflower voyage. Again I think that's from the bomb, bomb damage. So 16th century quite a lot happened. We had Queen Mary, Bloody Mary. 
five years she was in power, but she did a lot of damage. Um, because of the Catholic Church and the Puritan, um, as I understand it, they refused to bow down to the Catholic religion. They, um, they were martyred. Um, there's five people from Billericay who were burned at the stake in Chelmsford and Smithfield, London. It's possible they're buried here, I'm not sure. After that, we have Elizabeth I came to power and the Puritan mart, the executions, etc., eased right off. There still was problems, but um, we had the Puritan religion or movement that started up. Um, four residents came from here Christopher Martin, Mary Prower, her son Solomon Prower, and John Langmore. Who was a servant, and uh, they basically left for America. Yeah. Christopher Martin was quite a powerful character. He was church warden for a year, 1611. Um, these families had a lot to do with this church right here. Um, it's not sure where Mary Prower and Solomon Prower were born, or, or, or John Langman, Langmore. Um, but it's... Their son, Nath Nathanel, was baptised in 1609, and Christopher and Mary were married in 1606. He got into a bit of trouble in Easter 1612. Martin refused to kneel at communion. And he was sent, and later in the year, he was sent to Ingate Stone Hall, which is about three miles from here, for a religious inquisition. His stepson, Solomon Prow, in 1619, refused to take part in the confirmation, and he also had an investigation. Between the years 1617 1620, Martin sold his possessions. He had three houses. He was involved with the mill, not far from here, and other things. He was a, um, a merchant of some sort, I think in woolen, other products. He sold the, all his possessions and then he basically invested in the Pilgrims Joint Stock Company and he was appointed purchasing agent for the Mayflower, or the Speedwell. Uh, he was made governor of the Mayflower and uh, yeah he messed that up as well he was, uh, he was quite corrupt um, so yeah basically they left in 1620 some other interesting uh, things that happened here 1582 we've got Agnes Byron of Great Bursted she was accused of witchcraft she was found guilty of bewitching 20 brewings of beer And uh, there was also Margaret Pentyes of Little Bursty, which is not far from here, which is about a mile. Just over a mile. She was accused of 1605 witchcraft. John Scaife, he was a uh, weaver. He was accused of witchcraft in around that time as well. So we go on to this. This is the South Chapel. This is 16th century, so this is the last edition. Interestingly, they've done uh, so put some tiles in there. You can see the putt locks in the construction. We go round to this buttress here. We've got some sort of got kind of problems. This is actually quite new. It's 20th century. It's got a big crack running up it. We've got houses here which date from about two, three hundred years. Part of the old cemetery. Again, this, this area dates between the Mayflower time and 18th century. If we go along the 16th century South Chapel. 
We've got some sort of doorway that's been bricked up or opening. And then what we do is it butts up against the oldest part of the church. Now this, this is 12th century. Not the window, but the wall itself. So from here, right across the other side is 12th century. Now this, this is a Norman arrow slip. And they were built by the Normans for defensive purposes and they were not actually used in the early 12th century but they were introduced in the late 12th century. So that would be the time of Richard the Lionheart with his crusades. He was in power, Richard was in power from 1189 to 1199. Interestingly, the church also has a crusader's chest, which at the time, which dates back to the crusades, it's very possible it was the original uh, solid oak chest that was used for raising money for those crusades for Richard, which is quite impressive really. Now it's used for funds for the church, which is really nice. So. This is the north side. This is the north side entrance. And again, it's 16th century added onto 12th century wall. It's really old, made in oak. You can see all the different ages where they've added this kind of ornate craftsmanship. And then you can sit some sort of big joist thing there coming out, all carved nicely. <coughs> so, this is 12th century wall, with a newer window. Joined on to 14th century tower. The other interesting thing here is we have a plaque, self-explanatory, this is a recent addition, this building here. This is actually built in 1998 and it's really nicely done. As it's a listed building, it has to be done in the same period and style. So you've got little features like that at the top there. I've even got a little lead Mayflower that's uh, added on. Okay, so other interesting facts about this area um, in uh, 24th of September 1916 um, L32 Super Zeppelin which was an R-class Zeppelin came over and crashed in Great Bursted just over a mile from here um, Green Farm Lane which used to be called Jackson's Lane and it crashed, killing all 22 of the crew members. Uh, they've been on a mission coming over from Rams, um, coming over from Kent, Dungeness, they dropped their bombs, got lit up by the artillery lights and then they, had to, uh, they tried to make it across the channel. Their uh, captain was we're in a Peterson and he decided to make a run for it home. Ended up coming over here and he got shot down by Frederick Sowery, second lieutenant Frederick Sowery, the Royal Flying Corps. And um, yeah, they came down, ball of flames, all 22 were killed.
basically they're now buried well not now they were buried between 1916 and 1966 they were buried in this plot 22 crewmen were buried together the captain was buried separately buried here I've got a feeling that measuring it 20 were buried that way and a single body was put here and then you got the captain I hope you enjoyed that